you know, I was living in Montreal, party city. I was doing a lot of cocaine and eventually I, I got tired of always having a, a clogged nose. I mean, a, a smart person would think like, oh, I think it's time to stop. But for me, I thought if I smoke it, my nose won't be plugged anymore. So then I started with the crack cocaine and that was awful because it never ended. Like when I had no more cocaine, I, I would want to cry. But when I had no more crack, I, I would screw absolutely anybody I knew over just for $5. I saw my drug dealer and I, I asked him for something different because I felt like there was always something around the corner and I, I was just about to like win the game or something, got introduced to opiates, which was probably the most, the hardest addiction to keep up because it was physically demanding. I would wake up sick, shaking, freezing cold, just nauseous. And it was more of a chore than using for fun. I, I started by taking pills and uh, then I, I got frustrated that I had to wait for, for the, my system to digest them. So then I started to, to snort them and even that was too slow for me. So then I got into using intravenously. And once I started to do that, it was, I, I couldn't stop. And I was also still using crack and now the opiates. Because of the drug use, a lot of this is a blur and I, I don't remember everything perfectly. The details are all mixed up. I like, it wasn't a blackout, it's just, I don't really know what was real and what wasn't real, and it was like I was a zombie. I, uh, I eventually got really sick of waking up feeling sick, so I decided to go to a methadone clinic so I could, because I knew that Suboxone was an opiate replacement and so was methadone, but Suboxone did not get you high and methadone did, so I, I wanted to go on methadone so I could wake up not feeling as terrible and then continue to still use on top of that. And I was on a waiting list for about uh, three months, four months. Those were like the hardest three months because at that point my withdrawals were hospital and I would wake up and, you know, let's say I had enough drugs to do one shot. I, I couldn't even find my vein to put it in because I was shaking so much because I was so sick. So I had to put it in my muscle and I wouldn't get that rush from putting it in my vein and it was almost like a shot wasted but I wouldn't feel sick anymore. I was actually the longest person to ever be at Aurora. I was there six months um, and that was vital to be where I am today. I, I had enough time to detox and, and then to work on myself. I, was, I ha also have the longest stay in detox. I was in detox for 60 days. I came off my methadone um, cold turkey with no Suboxone. I, uh, I weaned myself off 29 medications. I flew home for Christmas and uh, it, uh, it went really well. Um, I was surprised that I was even allowed back into my parents' home because I had not only pawned everything, but I had gone into their bank accounts and emptied them all to, to zero. And I, I wasn't at zero trust, I was in the negatives with trust. But I think that they, they heard a difference in my voice and they saw a difference that they had never seen before. So they, I guess they had faith in me. So I, I did go home and it went great. I, um, I'm really honest with them now. Um, I, 
I don't hide anything and it was really nice to to not be around my family knowing that the only reason I'm there is to like get something out of them. I was actually there to to spend time with my family and to have a have Christmas together. I wasn't there to try to get money or to I don't know, steal something. I, I was I actually wanted to be with them. And um I know now that I can move back to Montreal because the city hasn't changed at all. It's the same. But I've changed.